put a jacket on if you re going out there, or you ll catch a cold. It has a common refrain of grandmothers all over the world. Are they right, though? Do low temperatures have anything to do with catching the common cold? Most of the scientific evidence is strongly against her, but Granny just might be onto something. Sure, people tend to get sick during the late fall and winter. An estimated 5 to 20 percent of Americans come down with colds or flu every year around that time, and the temperature as supposed influence is easily seen in both the names cold and influenza, traced to the Italian influenza di Freddo, or influence of the cold. The folk wisdom naturally goes that the two must be connected. But, as any doctor will tell you, colds and the flu are caused by viruses that happen to surge seasonally. Scientists used to think that viruses from the temperate regions went into a dormant state during the summer months, but now they think that the viruses are actually quite busy during the off-season and are transmitted throughout populations all over the world. A 2007 study by researchers at Pennsylvania State University found that the influenza A virus, for example, exchanges genetic information with viral strains from below the equator theoretically in a geographic area that would act as an influenza melting pot and viral reservoir during its globe trotting and is reintroduced to its home turf with enough genetic differences to fool our immune systems. It has kind of like the swallow's annual return to San Juan Capistrano, only the swallows come back to give everyone runny noses and coughs. Scientists still struggle, though, with what exactly triggers people getting infected with the reintroduced viruses in fall and winter. Researchers have proposed several explanations, which might work alone, simultaneously, but separately, or in combination with each other. They include weather and climate. The flu and colds appear to do very well in cold winter temperatures, and the dry air, that goes with them. They can survive longer in dry air than moist air and hold out longer on exposed surfaces, counters, doorknobs, keyboards, etc., when they re-cold. Dry air means dehydrated mucus and drier nostrils and airways, which could make it easier for the viruses to make themselves at home. Once they're passed to us, a study on guinea pigs showed that the transmission of influenza is enhanced in dry, 20% humidity, cold, 41 degrees, air, and declines, as the temperature and humidity rise. At 86 degrees, or 80% humidity, it wasn't any transmitted at all. Human behavior, with school and session and people generally spending more time indoors and in close contact with each other, the viruses have an easy time being transmitted among sizable groups of hosts. Even in tropical and equatorial regions that don't have a winter, and where flu occurs throughout the year, there are spikes during the rainy season, when people spend time together indoors. Human physiology, humans, and many other mammals experience seasonal physiological changes, often tied to the light-slash-dark cycle. In the winter, any number of tweaks to our immunity, such as a decrease in vitamin D production, could make us more susceptible.